So here we are in Photoshop with our ambient occlusion and normal map bakes. You'll see in my uh, layers panel there, I have three layers. I have my uh, ambient occlusion bake with my alpha cut out of it. I have my normals bake with my alpha cut out of it. And then I just have a flat 128, 128, 255 purple to go behind my normals. Now I'm just going to drag in this dirt, which I found on cgtextures.com. I spent a little bit of time looking for the right dirt and I immediately go into doing some good naming conventions. I have my original bake, um, which I've named uh, my original ambient occlusion bake. And then I just put both my normals in a normal group and I put all my things pertaining to my diffuse in a diffuse group. So immediately I set my ambient occlusion to overlay and I just use some quick levels so that it blends in with the dirt there. And I just put a copy of my ambient occlusion bake over the top and lowered the opacity a tiny bit. It's just on normal blending mode. And I did that so that the rocks can be a little bit grayer in comparison to the dirt, but uh, also so that I can visualize where my rocks actually are. Cause now as you see, I'm just control clicked on my layer to get a uh, selection out of it and I'm just going through and coloring a few different rocks some different colors to get a little bit of variation because by default they're all going to be gray. Now you could have done this in Max with materials and that might have been easier but I forgot <laughs> and um, this isn't too bad. It's you know just like 10 minutes of going through and coloring each rock a bit of a different color. So looking at my reference once more, now I'm just dragging in like a rocky granite type tiling texture that I also got from CG Textures that I spent a tiny bit of time looking for. And I just want to tile it a ton within my texture because these features are going to be really small on my rocks. Now I generally don't condone tiling textures within your tiling texture because uh, well, it just seems like a waste of pixels if your texture is already tiling to tile more within your texture. But in this case, the those features are going to be so subtle that um, it's really not going to be a problem. So to be perfectly honest with you guys, I have no idea what I'm doing here. <laughs> I'm just making color adjustments, just trying to use my eyeballs and mess around with things until I think I have something that looks like rocks on top of dirt. Right there, I duped my normal map and desaturated it. It's a trick I do to give my diffuse like a little bit more shading. And just messing around with blend modes to see what looks good for that. I settled on uh, multiply looks like and I just uh, tone it down so that it's pretty, pretty subtle. Okay, now I've skipped over some slight and random color adjustments, just me kind of fooling around with things. And the, uh, all this is really shooting in the dark until I actually have it in the engine and I see what it looks like. So now I'm saving off my Crytif as a 1024. Diffuse with alpha, it's really going to end up being a diffuse with alpha test, which means that there's no uh, grayscale, it's just totally black and white. But for some reason at this point I'm thinking that I'm going to have my spec in the uh, diffuse alpha, but that, that won't be the case. I'm just not thinking clearly right now. Now I'm copying that dirt diffuse. I, I just copied it to my clipboard and uh, I'm bringing it into Crazy Bump. And it doesn't matter that much, really. I mean, it matters a tiny bit, but I don't spend that much time messing around with these sliders on this dirt texture because it's really not going to be a very big deal. Really, the most of the normal information is going to be in the rocks. Just something, some kind of noise back there so that the light scatters a little bit as it would on dirt. And finally saving off my normals. And of course we need to choose the correct preset which in my case is going to be normal map low Q. And into CryEngine we go and we're going to use the road system to actually view our texture. I'm kind of authoring this texture for the CryEngine road system. Um, and here, this is, I'm just going to show you guys just quick and dirty how to make a road here in CryEngine if you don't already know how to do it. You're just going to, in the roll-up bar, in the create tab or whatever it's called, little hand, uh, you're going to go to miscellaneous and click on road. 
then it's gonna immediately pop you into the road tool and you can just start clicking in your viewport and the road is just going to snap. It's kind of like a Bezier curve in Max or Illustrator or something. And it's just gonna start snapping to the ground. And, and what's really cool about this is you can still move your camera around while you're placing the road, which is pretty neat. It's, it's the little things like that that they think of that make this uh, editor just a real joy to use. So you can just kind of place the row just by clicking and you double click to finalize. And if at any point you want to modify a row, you can just click on edit over there in shape editing in the roll up bar and just click and drag on these little points here. Now to get our road a little bit smoother in the road parameters, you can just go to step size and you're actually gonna want to lower that number. Raising it will make it even uh, low, more low poly. So you lower the number and that'll give you uh, more subdivisions with your road. It also will affect how much your texture is tiling though. So uh, you're sometimes gonna have to compensate for that with the um, tile length there right below it. Okay, we have a little road and now let's bring in our road texture and make a material out of them. So I'm just going to add a new material in our Celery Land folder. Uh, for those of you that don't know, Celery Land is kind of our working title for this world we're building. For some reason, I accidentally called it dirt underscore dot MTL, stupid name. I renamed it to dirt underscore trail just by right clicking on it on the left there. And now I'm browsing for my uh, dirt trail to fuse. And I just gonna, um, co I copied it and pasted it into the bump map uh, just so that when I press the dots, it's already in the right directory for me. So I don't have to browse again. And to apply this material to our road, we simply select our road and just hit the apply material to selection button. And you see we don't have an alpha yet, so it looks like garbage. So why don't we go make ourselves an alpha? And the way I'm going about making this alpha is pretty strange. I want the, uh, the alpha to kind of align with the dirt a tiny bit. So I'm just gonna use the magic wand tool and uh, mess with the tolerance a little bit and just make a selection so you, you see and I have contiguous on so that it makes this crazy selection and I just fill it in with white put black behind it and I just make a new group called mask and I'm just gonna be working on this as a mask or I'm gonna be working on it like a like a mask but not as a mask if that makes any sense so now I've just uh, made a new layer on top of it and just with a some kind of hard edge spackly brush. I'm going to start carving away at the sides here with just black paint. And that little spackle stuff hopefully is going to give us a little bit of like kind of fringing that will align with the features of the dirt a tiny bit. And I just combined it all into one and I giving it some levels. Now I obviously want the middle of the road to be solid, not, you know, not have a bunch of holes punched through it. So I'm just painting it with solid white with, uh, again, that same like spackly hard edge brush brush and just merging that down again. And now I just grab the s selection by control clicking on the rock layer. I just want, I obviously want the rocks to, uh, shine through no matter what. You don't want like a partially erased rock. And I just put that on top of the hole. Uh, Cause you know, I, I already had that selection from my bakes and everything. So that'll just be a good thing. Now I'm deciding to, to kind of um, destroy it all by just putting a lasso. And now I'm letting it creep back a little bit. So that first thing I did with the magic wand, it probably isn't gonna end up showing through very much, but whatever, I had to try to know that it wasn't gonna work. So now I'm just with a different spackle brush, kind of spackling in some spackle. <laughs> and now I'm just going to drop that thing in my alpha. And we'll see if that works. It, it might work first time, might not, we'll see. And resaving my diffuse. 
And at this point, I'm not going to change it to alpha test. I think alpha test just saves a tiny bit of memory. I'm not 100% sure on that. But you can still actually use the opacity slider in the material editor, if even if you have an alpha test um, like codec. And you can also use the alpha test, even if you have a normal full range alpha codec. So now I'm just taking a gander at it. Uh, it looks bright. Looks. I, I mean, I think the normals are popping, which is good, but it looks pretty bad still. First pass, <laughs> it'll it'll get better. So let's uh, go mess with it. We're definitely going to want to make a spec map now. Anything that has a normal map certainly should have a spec map. Uh, you shouldn't ever make something have normals without a spec. In my opinion, spec sells your material more than normals. Uh, but also the spec is going to help your pop your normals out a lot. So I just uh, copied the normal map in to Crazy Bump. And since we had bake normals, the if you just mess around with the specularity in Crazy Bump, you can usually get some pretty good results just with that. So notice the rocks are, are going to be a little bit shinier than the dirt, which, uh, which we want, or at least I want. And where the rocks are casting a sh kind of the... There's that halo around the rock rocks. I think that'll be good because that that's where like imagine ambient occlusion there. There'd be less spec there. So just gonna bring that in quick and dirty, save and uh, save it off as specular. We can't put it in the alpha of our diffuse because our alpha is already being used by the alpha, <laughs> the the alpha for the material. It'd be nice if you could pack it into your normals, but I don't think CryEngine supports that yet. So here I just mess around with the spec for a little while. Now, I'm not going to show it because it's pretty boring, but I would like to note before I kind of skip to the next section, um, when you are messing around with your spec, at least in CryEngine, be sure to also mess around with the Fresnel sliders over in the shader parameters on the right of the material editor. The, those are also really important. Uh, the Fresnel sliders determine um, how shiny your object is based on what angle you are. So you can make it shinier at glancing angles, which uh, a lot of things in the world are like that. So don't forget about those. We'll see the results of that specular messing session a little bit later, but first let's get back to this diffuse, which really needs a lot of work. So I just added a uh, adjustments layer and in the mask, I'm painting out some parts like where the rocks are. I'm just painting black there in the mask so that uh, this contrast adjustment, which is making our overall thing a little bit uh, a little bit darker, is not applying there as much to kind of get this uh, streaking effect. And I'm not sure right now if I want to, I'm experimenting with inverting the mask. I don't know if I want to make the light parts in the grooves or the light parts on the rocks. Both of them I think would make sense uh, on this particular trail. So over here I forged a new trail which is a lot more dressed up so I can see my uh, my trail in a better context. And uh, I, I dig it. I think it looks pretty cool. It gets a little bright still. So just really I'm just going to do more tweaking in Photoshop. Pretty much just adjusting contrast and whatnot. And I'm just going to kind of skip over to the end results. And here we are. I've dressed up yet another trail, kind of a more open, airy one in more sunlight patches. And I took this uh, kind of vanity screenshot of it. And I think it looks pretty cool. I, de I decided to invert the mask again so that the dark parts are actually in the grooves. And I, yeah, I, I, think it, I think it came out pretty nice. The only thing that it might benefit from perhaps is like a parallax offset map. Um, pretty cool new thing CryEngine can do, but that's going to be in a different tutorial. So, I mean, even without it, I, th I think that uh, POM stuff they call it is pretty expensive. And I think it looks pretty good without, but I'm definitely going to try it with and uh, we'll, we'll learn how to do that in a different tutorial. But anyhow, thanks everyone for watching. I hope y'all dug it and I'll catch you later.